Today we're going to be talking about day trading the opening sessions with the four hour highs and lows. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today I think will help a lot of traders understand some simple concepts. We talked in this in some other videos, the 717, the 915. Today we're going to be going back and revisiting some of those concepts and understanding the importance of the four hour time frame. Now, in one of the previous videos, we talked about how I use multiple time frames, but looking at that on my 15 and one minute charts. And whether that's the British pound pairs, gold, or any instrument, the same concepts apply. And essentially we're going to go through and ask a couple of simple questions that I always run through my head prior to the session open to identify number one, who's caught, who's trapped, are we up high or down low, where is the money? Because ultimately it's all about stopping traders out, margining them out, shifting the market, and hitting stops on the other side, or continuing to move a market, dragging traders further away in the trend and then coming back into the trend to stop hunt into the trend before continuing that move. Now traders can call that liquidity hunting, uh, whatever, filling gaps, I don't know. But at, at the end of the day, it's about money. And we want to be able, to, or I want to be able to position myself into the market for a fast move and, and hopefully be done in that first hour, whether it's the first hour of that equity session or the first hour of the 12 candle window. As we will see today, some of those opportunities present and how to spot them and how to know when to stay out in the gap times and when to be able to look at certain trade setups in the gap times that will offer us asymmetrical risk reward. Before we do that though, again, I want to thank a ton of people. There's been an immense amount of emails and, and questions and comments and again, trying to answer all of that in the videos. Uh, before we get started, could you just take one second for me as, as many of you have been doing and just hit the like button. Again, this has made a tremendous difference to the channel. And as we kind of continue and get deeper into this and, and hopefully simplifying things, uh, traders are getting more and more value and realizing you, you not have to sit at the screen for hours on end. You can obviously time certain opportunities and, and hopefully identify these asymmetrical risk reward opportunities to position yourself with a one bar stop. And today we're going to be covering some opportunities that will be five and 10 to one types of setups. So let's get right into it. So we'll just revisit our time frames 15 minute one minute again uh, mostly on gold i like to use the one minute for my entries and on the pound the pound crosses there are opportunities to enter in at the right times at the numbers at the highs and lows with the one minute charts but i essentially like the 15 minute charts it smooths smooths them out they don't move quite as erratically the one minute chart on gold looks like a five minute chart on any, any of the other instruments so we talk about our window, our timing window, Asia 8 to 11 p.m., Europe, London, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. The equity hour when London market opens is 3 a.m. New York, 8 to 11 a.m., 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Now, obviously, there are some other times that we're going to talk about today. And what I want to traders to grasp from this is, is two things. If you're trading in these other times at, you know, uh, for example, 2 o'clock New York, we'll put 2 p.m., 2 p.m. New York, uh, and also uh, the in-between time will be 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. New York, and 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. New York. So, sorry, the market opens at 9.30 in New York, but that gap time between when the, the London session, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., transitions to, we'll change that for that window in between, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then of course it will be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. New York. So once the equity market opens, we have our next four hour block and then the cycle starts again. So I talk about the 12 candle window, that first four hour block when we roll over from New York into Asia. So just before we get into that, a lot of emails again about the indicators, the sweet spots indicators for the numbers is down in the description box below. It's a free indicator. Just click and download. It's for uh, 
MetaTrader. I believe it works on MetaTrader 5 and 4. For other platforms, uh, I'm not sure what you can use. But again, you can even if you're going into a session, you can mark off those those levels yourself. You'll probably be in a 50 pip box, but you'll be able to identify your number levels on the chart. And the colored windows is the eye sessions indicator. That's what I put my timing blocks in. That's down below on my main charts. I don't use anything on there except the numbers. So it's up to you, but it is a free download. It's in the description box, and you can set your times accordingly based on New York time. It's a 24 hour clock, but again, wherever you're at, you can just work backwards based on your charting time. So when we roll over the last four hour window, now with gold, there's an hour gap between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. So that last window is a three hour window starting at 2 p.m. New York. Okay, so that's our last four hour candle. Now, again, we talk about three things that markets do. So if we look at every four hour block as a box, there's a high and a low. That market is either going to be an inside bar or it's going to have broken higher or lower. So we'll either have lower lows, uh, lower high, lower lows, higher high, higher lows, and it obviously could also be an outside bar or it will be an inside bar into the next session. So we have a four hour bar, we head into our next uh, four hour block heading into the Asian window. Now we are either going to break one of those boundaries, so if the high was here and the low was here. We're either going to be breaking through that, okay? So if we break higher in Asia in that in that four hours prior, doesn't I'm not talking about the 12 candle window, I'm talking about the first four hours of the new day. If we break one of those boundaries, we now have triggered breakout orders. We have other time frame traders in the market. We have breakout orders. We may have stops being hit on traders that might have been uh, trading in the other direction. So if traders were short, this break of the high may have hit their stops. So they've either been closed out or break even or stopped out for a loss. But what's important is that we now have a boundary that's been broken. So this market is either going to fail and come back inside. So again, three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back and they trend break out, pull back and reverse. So this market's either going to be a reversal, which again comes back to our timing window at the open of the session. What's happened? Have we had a false break and now we're going to have a reversal into the open? Or is this market broken out and pulling back and we're having a trend trade into the open? Or are we just merely in a trading range where the market has broken out and now we're trading back inside of this four hour high low? What's important to understand is that when we get into the course of the day, over the course of the day, Asia, London, into New York, in a lot of scenarios, what we can have happen is we can have Asia possibly put in a high of the day and London possibly put in a low of the day. And that comes back to our basic pattern again of expanding the range, expanding the range and pulling back inside and heading into New York in that next four hour window, we will either have a retest, so a, a possible breakout and trend into that next four hour block, or during this four hour gap time, they will come down to the low or the high, and again, false break and reverse, so we head into the opposite direction in the US, or we pull back into that breakout and continue the move, Again, so we've had to expand the range, expand the range, pull it back into contraction, and then continue the move. Or are we pulling back inside in New York in the gap time, and we're just trading inside of the high and low now in consolidation in a, in a range bound market. The four hour high and low can give us a ton of information about who is trapped. So again, who is trapped and where is the money? In the gap time, if they come down, and trigger the low. If this is the gap time low and they pull it back inside, the most obvious place where their stops will be is on the opposite side of that four hour bar. If the market only auctions part way up, then each hourly high inside of there as we get closer to the end of that window now becomes an area where stops, if that market only pulls back 25 to 50 pips, we know there's stops back down here. 
if the market rolls back underneath a peak formation heading into the US four hour window, we know there are stops here. The market is going to go to one of those areas. So those four hour boundaries are critical to understand because that also gives us an idea for asymmetrical risk reward. What is the range of that four hour candle? Yesterday we saw some textbook perfect setups going into the open of Asia for a, for a breakout of a uh, rectangle in that first two hours. It trended all through the Asian session. The next four hour window broke out, pulled back and continued. And then the London, the Europe London 12 candle window broke that high again, taking traders 25, just over 25 pips higher to the top of a double zero box before pinning and giving an M pattern and reversing. So now we know we have four hour stops below that gap time four hour bar. They pulled it back inside of the range. London opened and it continued to move towards the bottom of that four hour bar. So we're talking about a hundred pip box and that market actually was the peak formation for the day. So coming back to what I just talked about, understand that each session can potentially put in a peak formation high and low prior to heading into the US and now we have not only our range but possibly an even greater range for either a measured move or asymmetrical risk reward targeting 100 or more pips where you're risking maybe 15 pips on the trade or less or more depending on how you're filled and in some cases when these markets are going 150, 200 pips now we're talking maybe 15, 20 to 1. So it's really important to understand that if you're trading in this time and you're inside of the high and low, that we, we actually want the market to come back and trigger one of those levels prior to entering into the market because then we know we've triggered other breakout orders and now those traders are in the market and the most obvious place that their stops will be will be on the other extreme. So as the market continues to move in their direction, they may move their stops to the low of that current four hour block, which is in most cases the low of that current hour they're trading in. So I hope that makes sense. If you grasp that concept, as, as the market's moving higher, we're triggering other time frame traders into the markets. We also are getting stops placed into the market at all those levels and traders may be moving their stops higher once that market locks in a level, it will come back through and hit those stops. If we tie that in with our, our 12 candle window opening hour and equity hour, as we talked about, in many cases the equity hour will either complete a move or it will take traders back to the extreme as a stop hunt before reversing and heading the other way. So not to confuse this with a trend trade because even in trend trades, the market will still stop hunt back into the trend before continuing that move. We're going to look at some examples on the charts today. So important to understand when those four hour windows roll over because they will often revisit one of the extremes, triggering breakout orders of traders on that time frame. If you trigger the four hour, you're getting the one hour, the four hour, the 30 minute, the 15 minute, five minute, one minute, you're getting all of them in. And so we know that there's stops on the other side of that four hour bar. And if the market moves 25 to 50 pips, they may be tightening those stops up. They'll retest at least the breakout trader. Nobody gets a free lunch. We'll look at that on the pound. We'll look at that on the Euro as well and gold. Hopefully you got value from that today. Traders understand the importance of those four hour highs and lows, especially as we head into the 12 candle window and the open of the session, because if we have broken one of those just heading into the window, we're at round numbers, we're at the high or low of the day, we could potentially be in for a large move either with the trend or for a reversal trade back to the other extreme. So again, possibly targeting 75, 100 pips, especially if we've seen again, one, two, three levels of rise heading into an open or down, whether that's 25, uh, 25 pip boxes for a 75 pip a move up or down or 50 pip boxes and sometimes in the US session 100 pip boxes so keep it simple stay disciplined we'll look at that on the charts and again thank you for a ton of great feedback keep it simple pay attention to those clocks if you're trading around those times wait for that next four hour window you'll be amazed at how many times they retest one of the extremes or they hit that trigger those breakout orders or continue a trend in that 
original direction of that first drive. So Good day, Trader Stacy Burke continuing our discussion on understanding the importance of the four hour highs and lows in our 12 candle window, but also as we have the gap times, the importance of that four hour window in terms of our four hour candles either uh, breaking out, triggering a false break reversal as we head into our next session. So we could have a move moving from one side of a four hour candle to the other at the beginning of a 12 candle session. Or we could have a continuation of a trend trade. Or the market may actually lock in one of the extremes and we may be beginning a new move uh, either in a trend direction or to go back inside of a trading range. So as we head to each session and each day, we can take a look at the most recent four hour candle to identify the highest probability setups and then coming back to our Monday to Friday template knowing if we're up high, down low, have we had you know one day, two day, three days in the same direction. Uh, making sure that we're not getting caught into the false move at the session open, uh, chasing a move, getting caught down low or up high before the market shifts and reverses the other way or trading uh, counter trend to a strongly trending market. So when we look at gold, obviously we've had uh, three weeks down, but each session, regardless of the trend of the market, we can still get a 50, 75, 100 pip move sometimes in the opposite direction. And understanding that the market itself, uh, when we when we head into the 12 candle window, we are, may already be in a move as we head into the beginning of the session. So the market may have gone in the gap time and triggered stops on one side, which again, understand that that triggers other time frame traders into the market. So for example, uh, looking at today's Asian candle, we had a break of yesterday's low and obviously that gets traders into the market and at the beginning of the session we broke the most recent low of the four hour bar prior to the rollover. So the inside bar, the small bull candle was the last candle of the US session for the Monday and we'll look at this on a smaller time frame. Uh, but, but you'll see that traders were short the uh, 1700 candle or the the um, second last four hour window and again understanding that when you trade breakouts very rarely do you have a strong move without any heat against your position we we see that in blow off moves but again often you'll you know entering into a break of a candle's low or high prior to the 12 candle window meaning in the gap times in most cases, especially on gold, you're looking possibly at 50, 75, maybe 100 pips of pullback before that market actually continues in the direction of that break. So, for example, you may have be trading the four hour time frame. And, and again, get the concept that it, we are trading with the larger trend, we're trading with the larger time frames, but we're going to time these to get the best price possible. We know that the market is going to trigger breakout orders and then pull back, potentially uh, putting heat into those traders. And we want to fight for the best price at the right time to get into the market when it does decide to move in that original direction. How do we do that? We look at our timing window. Uh, again, uh, the Asian, London, and New York windows, and, and often the equity hour in London and New York can often be the most important to either complete or continue a move or to take us to a an extreme to give us a fill at the high or the low for a reversal trade you know again these most of these trades will move quickly so if we look at a smaller time frame so we look at the smaller time frame in uh, Monday uh, Friday and heading into Monday we'll just reconvert this show our Monday bar so Friday night, we have our last four hour bar, the high and low, obviously the, the high of that four hour bar is up here, but we have a breakout of a rectangle just prior to the close. And again, the market opens on a gap, which obviously triggers the break of the four hour high candle on Monday morning. And so coming back to our original premise about structure, uh, we want to be looking at this uh, in terms of geometry and, and measured moves but this market was already in a breakout on Monday morning so we're in a new four-hour candle the market has had a breakout and we have our W structure 
in the second last four hour candle from Friday. So again, coming back to who's in the money, we know traders in the US session, the high of that last hour uh, actually was down here. So the, the last four hour candle high was at the little peak formation just below there. We'll double check that. So our four hour candle, the high of that bar was right here. We head into Monday morning and we're in a breakout. The market's in a, again, double zeros. We've cleared 50. We've pulled back, continued into this move. And again, the market's broken above double zeros. I've talked about this before. When you have a market that, that goes above zero prior to the session open, you know there's stops up here, which means there's high probability we're going to be heading back at least to 25, if not to 50. We know the high of that four hour candle is down here. And again, coming back to the original move, they've locked in the low, they've come up 100 pips and gone sideways at double zeros, broken out of that rectangle. And again, the measured move on this rectangle, just on this measured move itself, takes us up at least to 74.40 if the market was to continue to move. So we know we're going to probably move towards the high of that uh, U.S. session four hour candle. So again, we're, we're looking at opportunities where the market has trapped traders and it's going to reverse possibly and head in the opposite direction once it's got those traders in that direction. So again, the market uh, breaks out, pulls back and continues to move from double zeros up through 50, hitting the stops from the four hour bar and continuing up to double zeros. Now at the end of this four hour candle, the high of that four hour candle <clears throat> is right here. So again, we'll zoom in on this. So <clears throat> the, the next hour opens up on the big bull pin right here. So we have a breakout pullback continuation. We now have the four hour candle triggering breakout orders, uh, making new highs and going through the double zeros, continuing a bit higher before finally pulling back. So we have one push two pushes and a third push with a one, two, three at the high. And then it pulls back and it pulls back into the breakout level. So we have a four hour bar that's been broken, but they've broken out, pulled back and they begin to continue that move. So again, we're in the gap time. So the gap time four hour candle continues to make new highs. So now we have a four hour breakout bar and a new four hour candle breaking out and making new highs. And again, remember this is before we get to our um, Europe London 12 candle window. So again, in the gap time, the market continues to push higher before pushing above 50 again and ending on three pushes to the high and a one, two, three at the very end for locking in and coming back inside of our 12 candle window. So we have two four hour bars now that have made uh, made a higher highs and higher lows. So as we start our new 12 candle window, we have our four hour bar low is right here. This is where the four hour candle started. And we have our four hour bar high right here. The Europe London 12 candle window opens inside of the high and low of the four hour bar. It continues to push higher, breaking new highs. Now remember, we have four hour traders in the market every time they break a new high. We also have one hour traders entering in and the most obvious place to put their stops for a one hour trader would be at the low of this, the beginning of the hour. Four hour traders may initially put their stops below the previous four hour bar. Again, if they're just looking at the one time frame. But as this market pushes 25 and proceeds to push towards the 50 pip extension of that initial move. So we're 25 pips above that range at the end of the four hour candle. And then they're pushing higher in that third um, 15 minute bar. So we have uh, 15 to 45 minutes in one direction. Again, we talked about that double zeros. They've cleared the 75. We've got four hour traders in the market. Once we've moved 25 to 50 pips, these four hour traders may also move their stop to the low of that new four hour candle, which is our the, the low of our first hour, our 15 minute, our one minute, all of those trades before pinning, pulling back and engulfing and then rolling over, giving us our little M structure on the one minute, consolidating before falling away, 
hitting the stops and pulling back. So again, they initially trigger a breakout order before pulling back approximately 25 pips from high to low, 20, 20 pips from high to low at the London Open. So the, this little uh, two pin combination is the London Open on the bull candle and then a bear pin to the high before falling through that first bar of London. So again, now we have four hour traders triggered short. We have four hour traders triggered long. We have stops on both sides, but the market has now broken below the open of that first hour. We're also below the low of the London hour. So we have one hour that's closed as a giant pin bar. And we have the new equity hour has stop hunted back into the trend before falling back. Now it pulls back into that sell from the open of the session and rolling over and giving us our railroad track or our engulfment, whatever traders want to call that. And we also now have structure. So we've got a, a peak formation structure. So remember we, talk, we talked about uh, each session possibly putting in a peak formation low or peak formation high. So we have the peak formation low in Asia. We have a peak formation high potentially now in London. We are underneath of the open of that 12 candle window. Breakout, pullback, false break reversal and continuation. That market trades down to the initial low of that first 15 minute candle at the London Open. So again, we know there are stops underneath of the four hour bar. So we've triggered breakout orders on one side, pulled back inside of that high low. We've got 15 minute, five minute, uh, one minute, all these time frames, one hour triggered long. We've got stops under that first hour, first bar of that, that new hour and new four hour candle. And we also know there are stops down below and into the Asian low, the low of the day and the beginning of the, the overall low of the day, which is the beginning of our first four hour candle for the day. The market proceeds to work its way down lower and lower, clearing out these stops, continuing to move lower before putting in a low of that four hour candle. So again, that four hour candle pulls back inside. The low of that four hour session is down low. We'll use green actually so people can see it. And we start our new hour, our new four hour candle inside of this uh, peak formation low. And that new four hour window begins on this little bull candle right here. We'll just circle that. So point being you're tying this in with your other information but it's important to understand that when these time frames are triggered so they uh, pull back into that full expansion before pulling back consolidating underneath the peak formation and then breaking through the low of that that bar breaking the low of the four hour bar so remember we're in the gap time now so now we've triggered for our traders they pull back and they continue to go lower before reversing and consolidating. Again, whenever you get a peak formation, you look for that consolidation, that sideways price action. That's, what telling, that's what's telling you they potentially have locked in a peak formation for the reversal. And again, timing. Uh, this, this is one hour in to that new four hour candle. They've triggered breakout orders on the, on the four hour bar. And again, if you were short at the break of this candle and your stop is above that four hour bar from pr the previous four hour bar, you may move your stop to the high of the current four hour or one hour bar. And you'll see that they come back to hit stops at the high of that candle before pulling back after three pushes to a peak formation, engulfing for the fast move back down again just prior to our US session 12 candle window so trigger trigger breakout orders one hour four hour 30 minute 15 minute whatever going to consolidation come back and stop them out of break even or with a small loss before reversing and now again tying this in just structure wise okay a full expansion maybe more but again we're looking at, at numbers so we're looking at I talked about three levels of rise or fall. This is uh, 25, 50, 75, 50 pips of a pullback. So again, you're triggered in short 
and they put 50 pips into the breakout traders before continuing the move. So even if you're trading end of day, four hour, people talk about, you know, one minute charts or noisy, all this stuff. If you're trading breakout orders on a four hour chart, they're still going to put 50 to 75 pips, maybe 100 into your trade before they continue the move. So it just again talks about how big is your stop going to be, what kind of size can you put on that, and you know how much stress can you handle if they go 100 pips into your trade and you have size on it. So they come back down and they break through that level at the 25 level. So obviously 25, the quarter level, significant possibly for a breakout pullback in the next session. The market drops down and goes into consolidation just into our 12 candle window we're below the double zeros the market consolidates and pushes into the numbers pulling back one two three engulfments and again conceptualizing that the first 15 minutes they will usually put it maybe seven and a half minutes in one direction seven and a half in another they put a low in place they put a high in place it's a 25 pip box they stop hunt the high, then they engulf in reverse, and they proceed to go 50 pips down before locking in a peak formation low. So now come back to our four-hour window. So as we head into the New York Open, we potentially now have our low of the four-hour candle in place and the high of our four-hour candle in place. We're inside. They, they make a high, they make a low, just like we talked about with Asia and London. And they pull it back and go into consolidation. So again, you'll notice that our initial range expansion that we showed from this peak formation, high, low, uh, Europe open, where they reversed, they went through the open. We hit three full expansions of that range just prior to the New York even opening. So again, the gap time fulfilled that movement of three full expansions for traders who held on to that for more. They put in a high, they put in a low, and they go into consolidation. We're inside the four hour high and low now. So obviously we either wanna wait until they hit one of these extremes, or we're looking for something where they, at the equity open, they again go to the E, go to the high, go to the low, or they make a new high. So we have our, our low of the day in place for New York so far. We have our high of the day, they break that, okay? New York opens and hits the stops, pulls back, and again gives us our little M structure up high at the area where the breakout occurred, 25, before going 50 pips fast and furious, hitting the most recent swing low prior to New York opening. And again, we're still inside of the peak formation high and low, but New York has potentially put in a high of the day in place at the equity opening, stop hunting back into that move and then our new four hour bar opens we'll just zoom out a bit on this okay this big bear candle down and then this big bar reversal are the first two minutes of the new four hour candle so again i talked about when the new four hour bar starts we either want to be in, a, in an existing move so traders have got their 50 pips it gets to the most recent low goes into consolidation we're out of this trade it has not violated one of the highs or lows so we've got our new york high our uh, 12 candle window opening low for the four hour candle the next hour opens and they proceed to auction back up so again we wait until they get to the higher the low the market auctions for one hour in one direction without hitting the previous highs or lows and then our new hour begins on the bull candle we'll just highlight this so this bull candle again so again the market triggers the break of that hour this hour now that it hits the high of that hour and rolls back inside it has not hit the high of new york and it has not hit the high or low of the four hour candle but it has broken the one hour bar high triggering breakout orders on one hour traders who will now most in most cases have a stop below a one bar stop below their hour the market has higher lows from this hour creeping higher so again just understanding the concept of higher lows going to into a peak into a new peak formation this is fuel if the market comes down and hits these stops it's either going to reverse or 
go through this and continue to move lower. So the market moves from one side to the other. So again, hits the high of the hour, triggers breakout orders, pulls back inside, works its way down, hitting stops on the opposite side. So again, noticing this is a 75 to 100 pip box. Pulls back after hitting the low. So again, shorts would be triggered. They get a 25 pip pull back into their breakout order before continuing lower. And again, just coming back to our four hour low, the new four hour bar has gone one hour up, hit the stops and pulled back inside. So again, one hour in the false direction, pulling back, breaking through the low of that hour and continuing lower now throughout the rest of that session for in our last four hour window pulling back into consolidation. So again, if we mark off our high and low heading into the new the new day on our four hour window, we've got our low of the four hour window and the high of the four hour window. We head into our new day into Asia. And again, the market creeper down, makes a low, pulls back, hits the low again before working back up into 50. Stop hunting back into that peak formation low market proceeds to work higher. It breaks the boundary of our four hour high low heading just prior to our 12 candle window. So this first hour goes sideways. The second hour breaks out of the first hour, pulls back, continues higher, triggering a break of the four hour bar. And again, if we break this four hour high, this market could potentially keep trending. But if it pulls back inside, we also know we have stops below this new new hour which began right here so we have stops underneath of that second hour and we have stops underneath the first hour and we have stops underneath of our four hour bar the market makes higher lows three pushes up into the open of our 12 candle window so these are the types of trades that we can look for where we know we've got a larger asymmetrical boundary we got stops in place. We've triggered other time frame traders. It gives us our M structure. Market drops right down, hit stops, pulls back to 50. So again, breaks through the 50 box, pulls back into it before continuing down, taking out stops, triggering shorts on the new four hour bar. And again, pulling back underneath the double zeros and continuing lower. So again, we're in our first hour. The market is in a strong move. We have one push, two pushes, and then a third push down again into our almost our full hour before hitting the bottom with a little micro W formation at the end of the hour. Okay, the end of the hour on top of double zeros. The market opens up the new hour with a little bear candle down getting traders to chase this, thinking the trade is going lower before giving us a little inside bar, pulling back, and then breaking above that W structure for a 50 and almost 75 pip pullback. You know the new hour now comes back inside of the previous hour. One push, two pushes, three pushes, and almost 75 pips again, three levels of rise or fall, 25, 25 off the bottom, 25, and almost a third level of 25 before going sideways and giving us our M structure. So again, 30 to 45 minutes in one direction. In our third 15-minute uh, bar, the market begins its reversal back down towards the low. And again, we're still inside of our four-hour window. The market gets towards the end of its second middle hour before it opens up on the bull candle. So again, our, our last hour of the four hour window opens up, just open this up. Makes a new high before pulling back and hitting stops, peak formation low, and then this is our gift. It breaks the low of the four hour bar. So again, we're at into our new four hour candle. The market breaks down, 
go sideways after the little inside bar. The first bull candle, bull pin hammer is the first one minute bar of our new 15 minute candle, the third 15 minute candle. This candle goes from double zeros up to 50 for a 50 pip stop hunt on lower highs for we triggered uh, four hour traders into the market we've triggered one hour traders into the market we triggered 15 minute traders into the market and whatever other time frames so we've broken that lower boundary they've hit the stops of that four hour bar before consolidating inside of that peak formation one two three reversal consolidation pin hammer engulfment sideways and then a 50 pip move hitting stops so again, this four hour bar, as we head into our gap time, we're in the gap time, this new four hour bar has now come back inside. We're trading sideways. We could see the Europe London window retest that extreme. So we've got a four hour bar that's triggered breakout orders. If you were short this market on a four hour break, you were sitting underwater at the moment. Now we know there are one hour stops above this candle. We know there are one hour stops above the high of the Asian session, which is the beginning of that a new hour which is also the high of our four hour bar so we've got our current four hour bar inside we've got one hour stops inside and we have our four hour bar stops down below the range so again if we trigger these other time frame traders we we can look for opportunities where the market you know again it may not go all the way to the other side but this is still a 50 pip move hitting these lower highs back inside getting traders who are short on the m formation in that middle hour whenever they go to the outside in a new four hour block there's potential now for that larger asymmetrical risk reward as there is as the course of the day expands we talked about this before asia put the low in place London put the high in place or Europe London open put the high in place then they proceed to trend back down on Friday we saw Asia put the high in place Europe London put the low in place they went into consolidation into the US session before breaking out and continuing that initial move down so peak formation high in one of the sessions peak formation low consolidation the same principles apply to the four hour charts and when we apply that in the new four hour window and they break to a high or a low now we have the opportunity that traders may be trapped in the wrong direction or they may be performing a stop hunt back into that range for 25 50 maybe 75 pips with a 15 to 25 pip stop max so hopefully you got value out of today's video traders those four hour windows in the gap times heading into the next session peak perfect setup this morning on asia uh, for a beautiful move back through the low, not only of the day, but a low of the four hour bar. And again, extending that range before triggering a 50 pip move back in the other direction for traders who saw that new four hour break down low. So keep it simple, traders. Stay disciplined, stay focused. It doesn't matter what instrument you're trading, you can apply these principles on anything. And again, uh, keep it simple. Uh, Stay disciplined, stay focused, and may the market go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.